you know, back in, in, in my old job, uh, when I was running the team, we had, we assisted with an event. Um, and the primary that we had on the phone is the one that was on the phone deal got closed, so to speak. And she did a remarkable job. In fact, it was probably some of the best use of the skills that I had heard in my 20 some odd years of being involved in the discipline and the powers that be, uh, came to me and, and they too thought she did a tremendous job. And they said, we want you to write a letter of commendation for her performance. And, uh, my response was no, I'm not going to write a letter of commendation just for her because while she was the focal point of the incident, there was a team of no less than 11 other negotiators who were in the background supporting her, supporting her in the role of coach, supporting her in the role of um, intel gatherer, supporting her in the role of scribe or, or situation board representative. Uh, and so it supports the adage. You want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go. F if you want to go far, go as a team. You're not always going to be able to have a team with you. I understand that, but when you can control it, you should not go into the room. You should not get on the call without at least a wing person to go with you. Invariably, things are going to get by you. If you are the primary negotiator, you're the primary contact with the other side. There are things that are going to be said that you are going to miss. And it's comforting to have someone in the room, someone on the phone with you, someone on that video call to help you. So I uh, will we'll give you an you overview know, of what it looked like from a HNT, a hostage negotiation team perspective. And you'll be able to see or at least be exposed to some of the elements that you can pull out and pl plug and play with in your next uh, negotiation or, or, or difficult conversation. Some of the key terms we're going to talk about negotiation operation center. You'll hear me refer to it as the knock, and that is the location from which the primary engages the counterpart or the location in which that's that slide is messed up. The location in which the negotiations are being conducted from the primary negotiator is the sole communicator with the other side, the coach, where the secondary negotiator is the direct link to the primary or between the primary and the rest of the team. Team leader is the person who has overall responsibility for the effort. The scribe takes the notes and the situation board person collects and posts relevant information. When we talk about a knock, we're talking about in the old world, any office or conference room, it doesn't really matter. Any office or conference room, but you want to stand up a knock when the time calls for it. And right now we're in COVID, so the time is calling for you to set up a knock. Why wouldn't you? It puts you at a distinct advantage when off camera, within a room, there are people that are occupying different spots on the team in order to make the primary job that much easier. You know, a lot of the feedback that we got in the survey revolved around keeping people in their lane, not having people interject when they're not supposed to. Uh, it revolved around negotiating within the negotiation to make sure that our goals and objectives are aligned. And so when we start to look at the positionings within each team, as you prepare for your negotiation and you start to put people in their respective spots, that is the time to discuss exactly what their roles are, what's expected of them, and um, and how the, the flow of the conversation should go with the counterpart. Setting it up uh, on a phone call or for a, a Zoom call. Now, will all of you be in the same room when this call is taking place? Probably not in today's climate uh, because we're scattered all over the place, but that doesn't preclude you from assigning people to this position if you it to these positions if you have the numbers available so when we start talking about a scribe taking notes a scribe can be across the country in another room logged into the call um 
the, the situation board person could be in, in another room in the same building logged into the call. Uh, now, what's the difference between the person on the SIT board providing information and intel uh, when they are remote? There are various methods or there are various technologies that are out there that can assist you with that Slack, your, your standard text message, WhatsApp, whatever the case may be, where you can relay the information. So remotely or in the same room, the rules and the roles rarely change. All right. So your minimum team configuration, Brandon alluded to this earlier. You're at least you at least want to go in with one person. We call them the coach. The coach is there to support, direct, and provide encouragement to the the primary who actually has actual voice to voice contact with the other side. So specifically, your primary maintains direct contact with the person on the other side of the table. They are there to start that process of tactical empathy. They are there to help diffuse emotions and the negative dynamics associated with the conversation. If you're in a conversation where I want or I need or in your head or in the head of your counterpart, the negative emotions, negative dynamics are going to be present. And the primary is the is the one person who is going to be used to diffuse those negatives on the other side. They're also there to gather information. There's information that your, your counterpart has that you're unaware of and that you will only uncover when you get into a dialogue. So the primary is responsible for remaining genuinely curious. Remaining genu genuinely curious means he is or she is on a, on a continuous hunt to gather information, to, to pick up those black swans. And the primary facilitates problem solving and gets us to a resolution or an agreement. Uh, the coach monitors, directs, and supports the primary. First and foremost, are they going to remain emotionally neutral? Are they going to not give rise or are they not going to rise to uh, meet an attack with anger or with a, a an attack themselves? It starts with their voice. It starts with their ability to control their tone. Their volume, their cadence is, is, is all very important. And when emotions are high, our inner voice will tend to betray our outer voice. And the, and the coach is there to make sure that the primary basically stays seated when emotions start to get elevated. More importantly, the coach is going to listen for opportunities to label important dynamics that may be missed by the primary. As I mentioned earlier, the primary is going is so engaged in the conversation, there are things that are going to go by and they are not going to pick up on it. And that's where it is important for the uh, the coach to step in. And and Brandon, while I'm thinking about it, I want to I want to pass it over to you. Because uh, I want you to give a brief snapshot of of OMB and how important you don't have to go into the whole thing, but how important it was for you to act as a coach on on that particular negotiation. Yeah, sure, sure, not a problem at all. So this is there's actually a case study that we do uh, for our our bigger training sessions. You know, the seven, eight plus hour training sessions, and uh, this case study is based on a negotiation that Chris and I were in directly, a black swan negotiation with a, uh, uh, over, over a government contract. And we had to work with a, an intermediary, right? A t what, what, what we would call in law enforcement, a TPI, third party intermediary, which was basically a contractor that was between us and the government entity uh, that we were working with in this case. And so, Early days in, in in Black Swan, so Chris was was our primary negotiator, right? He's the main guy. I am working as the coach, and so to Derek's point from earlier, the primary negotiator 
doesn't actually have the ability to pick up all the information that is happening at the table. And there's 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 plenty of data out there. I won't I won't bore you with the numbers, but the reality is we know based on scientific data, fMRI studies, all these things that the working brain does not actually have the capacity to absorb the amount of information that is coming off a human being at every given at any given moment. And the ratio is basically uh, three to one, right? Like per, the person is giving off at least three times as much information as you actually have the ability to pick up, which is why it's one of the reasons it's so important to have that coach. Because when you're not worried about what you're going to say next, it actually clears up part of your brain to pick up more information. So we're in this negotiation. We thought we had, we had poor assumptions going in, right? We had a poor hypothesis that we didn't test. We thought that our relationship with the government entity we were going to do business for was strong enough that they told the TPI, the intermediary, that, look, we love Black Swan. We've had their training already. We want more of it. Make the deal because we want these guys. And in addition to that, we do not do the same type of training that this intermediary, intermediary already does for this government entity. So we come in, and I'll never forget, the first thing out of Chris's mouth when we got on the phone was, we are really looking forward to this partnership. There were also two people on the other side. They happened to be women. Not that that matters. I just, I just can still hear her voice very clearly in my mind. Her response to that was, you guys aren't partners. You're subcontractors. And the way that she spit that out, I will never forget. I mean, that is something that is burned in my memory. Instantly, we're off on the wrong foot because this, this argument almost ensued right from Jump Street. And as we're working our way through, what I am hearing is an underlying theme is they are terrified that we are going to steal their client from them. And then in addition, we haven't earned the spot to work with this client. And so I jump in initially with a label and say, it sounds like you're most worried about us coming into your territory. And there's this long pause on the other end. And I wait a second and immediately jump into an accusations audit. That's you guys have done a lot of work to get to this position. We have fallen out of the sky and have come at you from left field. And basically doing everything I can to say, look, this is your barbecue and it tastes good. And that was the moment that was actually the pivoting moment that got us to resolution. We went from arguing over who actually deserves to be in this position to them agreeing to all the terms that we wanted, which in this case, as many of you will probably not be surprised by, was focused on how we're going to split up the cash. And we instantly went from a 65-35 split to an 80-20 split with no fuss because we were able to recognize that. And so the reality is you're going to run into problems at the table. You're going to have counterparts. They're going to have issues that they do not overtly express with their words. And that is the job of the coach to be, be able to pick up on those dynamics in the moment and then shine a light on them through the use of a label. And exactly as it's written out on the slide, looking for opportunities to label dynamics that have been missed. And that said, the last thing I'll add to this is when you're organizing your team, it's probably best to have your most skilled negotiator be in the coaching position. We've had a lot of discussions about this, and the reality is, Who's the most important person at the table? The primary is very important, but they're probably a 1A. Your coach is there to manage the entire situation from end to end. What's happening with your scribe, your sit boards? If your primary uh, hits a road bump, there's somebody's got to be there to bail them out, and you can't get caught thinking about stuff. You got to be able to give an answer right away. And that's where the coach comes in. The, the person that is always consistent, does not get rattled, fully uh, fully versed in the skills, and then also has the wherewithal to jump in with the right verbal observation at the right time. 
Perfect. And and so it, the other point I wanted to make along with that is um, why did you have to jump in? Because we were missing something on the other side. True. But the other reason you had to jump in is that Chris went into this conversation thinking that the, the skids had been greased. And not only was he caught off guard by the fact that the skids had not been greased, but he was also attacked immediately as the conversation got underway. And those two elements provoked a negative emotional response on Chris's part, one of the most gifted negotiators on the planet. And the negative emotions and dynamics shut him down. It shut him down to the point where he was missing what was being said. And that's where Brandon came in. So don't think that you're versed in the black swan skills. And so therefore you're immune to the negative emotions and dynamics that come in a part of a, as a part of a difficult conversation, because as Chris demonstrated in this case, you are not. So uh, providing organization, we're talking about assessing and developing the negotiation strategy. Now the coach is not going to do this in a, in a vacuum. He's going to do this in the, in the moment by himself, but in, in preparation, this is going to be incumbent upon everybody who calls themselves a part of the negotiation process and or or team. But in the moment, he's a, he or she is providing immediate short term assessment. And responses that the primary should utilize as needed. Those two words are very important as needed. Brandon said that as a coach, you should probably be the most capable of negotiators within your organization or on your team. With that comes a responsibility for you to keep your mouth shut when it's time to keep your mouth shut. People in the coaching position will often want to inundate the primary with say this next, say that next, say this next, say that next. And that's done by way of, of hand signal or sticky note or whatever, whatever form of communication you've come up with. But I've seen it time and again. I caution my team, don't overcoach your primary. You put them in the position to do the job, allow them the latitude to do the job. So as needed is critical. And you're also thinking ahead, anticipating what's that other side going to do or say? How are How is the other side going to react? The coach, not in a vacuum, but along with the rest of the team is responsible for making sure that the primary has been properly prepared before going in. We've got a one sheet on our on our website. Take advantage of that one sheet. Talk to your primary about anticipated issues. Where are we going to go? If this, then that. What are the themes and strategies that we're thinking about utilizing? Prompts and scripted dialogue, again, as needed. Your prompts or your, your scripted dialogue is going to take place prior to your prompts are going to take place in the actual heat of battle, for lack of a better term. And they're responsible for role play. Role playing is a critical importance. It, it does not make sense for you when you have time to prepare for a call. Sometimes you're thrust into a call that comes out of the blue and you find yourself in the middle of a negotiation with little time to prepare. If you have time to prepare, you should make as a part of that preparation process a role play. Don't let the first time you try to throw a down and out um, football pass in the Super Bowl. Make sure that you've practiced it over and over again. Your coach will have a good idea as to what the counterpart is like, will have a good idea as to all the negative opinions, assumptions, and impression that the counterpart has about you and therefore can assume the role of the counterpart pretty good. And so it's important to role play it out. It's important to uh, set your knock up just the way you would as if the actual conversation is going to take place. Rehearse every single role. All of this is going to be new to anybody on your team. So, you know, you're going to have to tell your scribe, this is exactly where I want you to do. This is where you're going to stand so that you are off camera. If it's a Zoom call, you're in the wings 
and we're going to keep the noise down. And when you, when there's something on that situation board that needs to be addressed, all you're going to do is point to it. And it's the coach's job to understand which one you're pointing to and then convey, relay the information to the primary. And we talked about uh, the emotional uh, control to make sure that the primary stays seated during the course of the conversation. Keep the con- primary focused on the goal and objective. Continually assess the dynamics between the two parties. You're removed from the conversation, so your assessment is going to be a lot clearer than what uh, an assessment would be coming from the primary. Um, This is of critical importance. Your coach is the primary conduit between the primary and the rest of the team. Stay in your lane. If you are a sit board rep, you're working the sit boards, that is your job. Your job is not to go directly to the primary with information that's relevant. Your job is to get it to the coach or the team leader and the coach or the team leader will provide it to the primary. All of you guys who are not actually on the call, you're not actually engaged in dialogue, are going to come up with ideas or strategies that you think are important and you're going to want to insert yourself into the conversation. Understand the impact that that has on the primary if they were to have multiple sources of information coming in at them all at the same time. Half of their brain is going to be offline when they're supposed to be engaged with the other side to determine what the true motivations are uh, behind a statement or a question. Half of their brain is offline because they're trying to process incoming information from the outside world. So to keep that funneled in the proper direction, it should go to the coach before it goes to the primary. And how do we do most of our conversations during these negotiations? Hand signals or sticky notes. 